SO3. I always start by counting the valence electrons. Uh, in this case, sulfur is in column 6 of the three octal table. We're looking at the Roman numerals with an A. And there's three oxygens in column 6. That's 24. And what this means is there's a sulfur in the middle surrounded by three oxygens. And it doesn't matter where I put the oxygens at this point. So I just put them right, left, and bottom. And I draw the skeleton, meaning I draw single bonds here. Each single bond counts as two electrons. So two, four, six electrons of the 24 I used right now. So I'm using it six of the 24. Uh, and now let's keep counting. Six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Notice I'm filling only on the outermost uh, atoms. I'm not filling on the sulfur until the very end. However, filling on the outside, I've used all 24. Okay, now there's a problem with this structure. One of the molecules doesn't have an octet. Which one is it? It's sulfur. So you can randomly pick one of the pairs to remove and make a double bond with it, like that. And now I've fixed the octet. Everything has an octet right now. And I have a pretty good structure, though I should check my formal charges. So let's review how to do the formal charge. We'll do it for oxygen right there first. What you do is you look at the column number. This is just a trick that I'm teaching you of how to do it. Oxygen's in column six. Now you count the number of items around that oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's in column six, it has six items around it. That's it. It's dead even, it has a zero formal charge. Uh, let's try another one. This one. Oxygen's in column six, however this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things around it. So it's over by one. A seven electronic species around it should be six, so it has one extra negative. The same is going to be true for this one over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's over by one, it should be six. Okay, think about the sulfur for a second before I do it. I'll give you about five seconds. Okay, in this case, sulfur is in column six also, but there's one, two, three, four things around it. And so it's short by two. So it's two, yeah, it has a plus two or two plus, either way is fine, uh, around that. Uh, we like formal charges of zero. Plus one or minus one are okay. Anything outside that range is not good. However, at this point, we don't have a way to fix this to make it better, okay? So we just have to deal with it at this point. Okay, uh, so those are the formal charges. Notice the sum of the formal charges will equal zero in this case, which is the overall charge of the molecule, zero. Okay, so there's one more thing you would need to do here, and that is draw all the resonance structures if they exist. And uh, you draw a double-headed arrow. And you would just put the double bond in other places. So there's a couple ways that you can know you have a resonance structure. Here's one. There's one. Here's another one. Again, a double-headed arrow.
general electrons can move around. That's the resonance structure. Let's try the next one. Uh, CH3CO2H. CH3CO2H. Again, start with the valence electrons. That equals, there's two carbons in column four. There's four hydrogens in column one, and there's two oxygens in column six. Let's see, that happens to be 24. All right, now what does this mean here? Well, uh, as you probably maybe vaguely remember last time, the center element is usually listed first, and then what's listed next is the ones around it, H, H, and H. And then now we have the next center element, carbon. And that has an oxygen and an oxygen around it. And then we have an H. So we'll draw the skeleton that is drawing in the single bonds, like that. And you drawing in those single bonds, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons of the 24 being used. So 14 of 24. Let's fill in the rest. I can't put any more on hydrogen. Hydrogen's all filled up, because uh, it can only bond once. So I can put, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, uh, 20. I've got 20 right now. I'll zoom in so it's a little easier to see. Uh, so I've got these filled in. And then I need two more. Uh, the only other oxygen available is right there. So I had to go internally a little bit to fill in the last one. Okay, does anything not have an octet? The, cent uh, the carbon on the right, center carbon on the right does it. So let's fix that. What I'm going to do is take uh, we'll get a different color here. Take one of these, scratch it out, and make it a double bond. Okay, yeah, she's uh, asking about the other oxygen. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, let's check the formal charge first, and then we'll see if there could be resonance structures. Okay, uh, all the hydrogens. Have a formal charge of what? <coughs> Should say zero because it's in column one and each of these have one item around. How about this carbon right there? What's its formal charge? Also zero, it's in column four and there's one, two, three, four things around it. How about this carbon? Zero because there's one, two, three, four things around it. It's column four. How about either oxygen? They're also zero, they're in column six. There's one, two, three, four, five, six things around this one. Also this one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six things around it. So in both cases, or in all cases, the formal charges are zero. Do we like zero or not like zero? Love it, love it. This is, this is probably the answer because uh, you don't often find one right off that gets all zeros unless your instructor is doing it for you. Uh, now you could have, so this is the answer, this is the best resonance structure. But you could draw, try drawing the others. So for example, what we had drawn earlier actually was a resonance structure. So this one here. Okay, what's the, as it was drawn earlier, what's the formal charge on this carbon right there? Yeah, it should be in column four, but there's only three items around it. It's short by one, plus one. What's the formal charge of this oxygen up here? It's in column six, and we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things around it. It's over by one. So, uh, and you'll see more why in the next section. Uh, carbon doesn't break its octet there, it tends to be slightly okay. Uh, but this is a possible resonance structure. And uh, there's one more that somebody in the front suggested. Could have done this. <coughs> it 
when I was here earlier, could have uh, scratched out one of these electrons and made a double bond here. That would be another possibility. What's, again, what's the formal charge of this oxygen? Negative one. What's the formal charge of this oxygen? It should be plus one. One, two, three, four, five. It's in column six. It's short by one. So it's a plus one. So over time, make sure you're getting better at the formal charges. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, let me finish this part first. So first, notice that all the sum of the formal charges is always zero because the overall charge of the initial species is zero. Uh, are, are there any questions on these structures? These are all possible resonance structures, though the best one by far is the first one. Why? Because there's zero formal charges. Uh, and the octet rule will satisfy it everywhere. Okay, uh, there was a question about what if this hydrogen here was put somewhere else and you were thinking over here, is that right? So that's a different skeleton. So it's actually a totally different species. Let me just draw it out so you can see. So some of you might have done this. Try this. There's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons used so far of the total 24. 14, 16, 18. Wait, wait, what did I say? Once? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Did I count that right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay? Alright, now we need to fix our octets. Okay? Uh, but the problem is I can't fix the octet of this oxygen right now. There's no lone pairs on a nearby, on a neighboring atom that will allow me to put a double bond there to really fix that. So because this is unfixable, I can't fix the octet. Also, in comparison with this one, I'm not going to find species as a formal charge of zero everywhere. Thus, if I did all of these, because of two reasons, octet and the formal charge, I definitely want to pick the top one. That means this is not the real species. Is that okay? So what happens is, if you guess the wrong skeleton, you're not going to be able to usually get as good of an answer as if you guess the right skeleton. So if you're working, working, and you can't fix it, and it's never getting that good, reconsider going back to the skeleton and changing the skeleton around. There's another reason. Uh, does anybody remember the name of this species here? What's the name of this? It's drawn a little differently than you've seen before. This is acetic acid. I'll give you a hint that you're going to see pop up in different places for acids, but what you'll learn in 2B if you take that class, the acidic hydrogen, so the H in front, uh, to be, which is this one, ha can't be on a carbon. Carbons don't allow for acidic hydrogens. They should be on a high of an oxygen. So for acids like sulfuric acid, H2SO4, those two H's are on oxygens. Or phosphoric acid, H3PO4, those three H's are on oxygens. Acidic hydrogens are going to be on oxygens typically. And so it's always a good guess to put that one loner hydrogen on an oxygen, not on a carbon. This would make it not a super. So that'll be something you can keep in the back of your mind. Because whenever you come up to an example where there's an acid, you should just put the hydrogens on the oxygens. Okay, is that helpful? Okay. Uh, I think there was more to that one. Uh, there was this one, the carbonate ion. Let's do that one. Valence electrons, let's all start there. Carbon to column four, and there's three oxygens in column six. And then I have to add two more because of the two minus charge. Uh, so what's that? Uh, randomly, this one's also 24. They're not always 24, but whatever. Okay. So it's oxygen surrounded by three, or carbon surrounded by three oxygens. 
Uh, 2, 4, 6 of 24. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 20, uh, wait, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay? Uh, everything has an octet except carbon in this case. So just pick one of these neighboring ones to scratch out to make a double bond to force the octet on carbon. Now, everything has an octet. We're pretty good. Uh, and now, since this species is charged, your final answer will have to have brackets around it with the overall charge. If it's zero, you don't have to do this. But if it's a non-zero charge species, you have to put brackets. Now, uh, what's the formal charge on carbon? Zero oxygen. Zero. This one's a not zero. What is it? These two are both minus one. Why? Because they're in column six, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things around it over by one. So both negative one. Notice the sum of the formal charges equals the overall charge. Zero. Oh, a negative two. This one also has resonance structures. Just by moving. Double bond wrap. See, isn't this stuff crazy fun? And these can get uh, a lot harder, as we'll see in after the next section. And maybe the Aggie will take the suggestion I've been putting in for years that on Monday you put a really easy Lewis structure in there for people to solve. For fun. Then Tuesday, Wednesday starts to get harder, and then you get a crazy hard one on the last day. Okay, so here's the resonance structures, just moving the double bond around. These would all be equivalent resonance structures, and uh, th these would be your final answer. Okay, I think I had one more. Yeah, it was NCO minus. Electrons. Uh, nitrogen is column five, carbon is column four, oxygen is column six, and then plus one for the minus one. That's ten plus six. That's sixteen. Okay. This is written in the order. Usually, it's written in the order we intend. So, N is first. C is in the middle. Typically, carbon's in the middle. Carbon is rarely terminal or on the outside. And let's draw the skeleton, 2, 4. So 4 of 16 electrons used so far. Okay, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, I'm done. So carbon, that doesn't have an octet, is a problem, but building all my electrons, again, on the outside. Okay, now this is an asymmetrical molecule. Which one do you want, which electrons do you want to use to fix the octet of carbon? The nitrogen ones or the oxygen? Oh, okay, you are equal opportunity sort of people. <laughs> maybe right, maybe wrong, we'll see. You want to do this. Make sure to put brackets because it has an overall charge of negative one. Okay, carbon has a formal charge of zero. How about oxygen? Also zero, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's in column six. How about this one? This is negative one. One, two, three, four, five, six, but it's in column five, it's one over. So one extra negative item. Okay, the sum of the formal charges equals overall charge. Is this a pretty good species? Yeah, just in case, you should check the other ones, which would be resonance structures of it. Let's say you took both from oxygen. 
So you did this. So both came from the oxygen to make a triple bond on the oxygen side. Formal charge of carbon is still zero. How about oxygen? Yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five, it's plus one. It's one under six, what it should be. How about the nitrogen? It's definitely a negative. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's negative by two. Because it should be five. We like this one. No, this is not good because of that negative two. Let's try one more though. Let's take them both from the nitrogen side now. Okay, one more time. Let's formal charge of nitrogen. Carbon zero. This is zero. It's in column five with five items around it. How about oxygen? <coughs> yeah, it's in Column six, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things around it, to minus one. Okay, do we like this structure? Yeah, which one's better, the first or the third? Okay, let's ask a different question. Who prefers the negative charge, nitrogen or oxygen? Oxygen. Does anybody know why? Huh? I think I heard some mumblers say it. I'm not sure. I'll assume you're smarter than maybe you are. I don't know. It's oxygen because it's more electronegative. So I slightly prefer the third one over the first one. But overall, I would report that both the top and the bottom answers is really good resonance structures. So I slightly prefer the bottom. Yes? The middle one doesn't work. It's not as good because of the negative two formal charge. That's right. But always, regardless, it's going to happen if the formal charge is sum up to the overall charge. But that's not a deciding factor because that always happens. Okay. All right. except when grades come out, because that's when people are the most upset. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Office hours as normal, Wednesdays. Uh, if you have a question about your grade, you can also ask me during office hours. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Maybe that'll be really exciting news, I don't know. So you'll be super happy to hear about it. You shouldn't paint it in such a negative light. Section six. Oh, by the way, if you wanted to see, the summary of this chapter is on page 95 of the reader. The only problem is, the only thing we've done is box one. So this is the chapter, and really part of the next chapter, but we've only done this box so far. Maybe we'll get to the next couple boxes in a bit. Okay, so that's page 95. But really, starting now, we're going to section 6, which is page 87 in the reader, and in the textbook, page 367. All right. Uh, this is, again, yeah, section 6. And these are exceptions to the octet rule. There's a number of exceptions. I'm going to teach them to you. Uh, as we go on, they'll be more important. So the least important ones are coming up first. Though they pop up from time to time. Number one, odd electron species. Uh, this happens occasionally, but interestingly, it, it doesn't happen too often just because they're less stable. Uh, so let's do the first one. I'll just say this is a general example, and every textbook will give this example of NO. Uh, nitrogen monoxide. Let's try this one. Valence electrons 
equal 5 for nitrogen and 6 for oxygen, or a total of 11. So let's draw that out. There's a skeleton. 2 of 11 so far. Now let me get a different color to finish it up. 2, 4, uh, 6, 8, uh, 10, and now we have one more. I'll just stick it here. Okay, now I want to fix the octet of nitrogen, so let me cross out one of these and make a double bond. Oxygen now has an octet. Nitrogen has like a seven tet, two, four, six, seven. Uh, oxygen has a formal charge of what? Zero. Nitrogen has a formal charge of what? Zero, so we're done. It's just weird looking. And that happens whenever you have an odd electron species. And in fact, on last quarter's final, we had one of these. B, free radical. Oh, by the way, uh, these are often paramagnetic. What does that mean? Does it, is it magnetic if it's paramagnetic? Yes, it usually is magnetic because there's unpaired electrons. So these tend to be magnetic. Okay, free radicals. You'll see these in OCHEM a lot. They're extremely reactive. Uh, they could be Lewis symbols. Let's use a different color to show you the examples. Like bromine, uh, this is a Lewis symbol. It's a free radical. Or a methyl, a methyl group with a dot, or H with a dot. Just an odd electron species. They pop up definitely in OCHEM, you'll see them. Uh, they're highly reactive. But again, they don't fit the octet rule. Okay, now let's go on. That was section one, number two now. The second set of examples, incomplete octets. You'll see these a little more often. Uh, the classic example is BH3. Let's try this. The valence electrons are 3 for boron plus 3 times 1 for hydrogen. Three hydrogens in column one. That's a total of six. So it's a boron surrounded by three hydrogens, two, four, six. And notice I've already filled, used all my electrons, and hydrogen doesn't have an octet. And in fact, like I mentioned in the last time you had a class, hydrogen doesn't have an octet either. So here's a general rule. If you look at your periodic table, everything to the left of carbon everything to the left of carbon, so the boron column, everything in the middle, and the first two columns all could have an incomplete octet as an exception. Okay? Everything to the left of the carbon column. And in fact, as you saw in an example earlier, it's not unusual to see uh, carbon with a plus charge and an incomplete octet. That wouldn't be weird either. So even carbon, uh, with a plus one formal charge could have an incomplete octet. Alright, so you'll see those usually uh, in every problem. Hopefully they don't freak you out at all. Uh, now, what you'll see the most, or what cause the most uh, excitement when doing these problems is the expanded valence <coughs> shell. It's the ex exact opposite of the previous. Uh, in the previous uh, incomplete, now we're over the octet in this example. Uh, let's look at I3 minus. The valence electrons for I3 minus, where's three iodines in column seven, plus one for that minus charge. So I, I, I. Okay. And then let's fill in the electrons. It's two, four of, uh, oops, 22. 4 of 22 so far, uh, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So I filled my octet, but I still, of every uh, atom has an octet already, but I have two more electrons because I'm at 20 of 22. When this occurs, uh, Luckily, I've drawn this slightly at the side here. You're going to put the last pair on the center atom. And what happens is atoms that are large enough can actually take more than eight electrons on them. 
because of their size, they can balance out their overall charge. So anything below the carbon row, now I'm talking row, anything below the carbon row on the periodic table can have an expanded valence shell or more than octet. So uh, that's the, you know, aluminum and over, gallium, indium, thallium, all those and over, all those rows can take an expanded valence shell. So in fact, the only ones that are not going to take they're, they're going to not have an exception, I should say, are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon, when they're neutral. So neutral, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon are the only five elements that will not break the octet rule when they have a zero formal charge. Everything else on the periodic table, all 114 on this table on the wall, will break the octet. If it wants to, it doesn't have to. So these are the ones you have to watch out for the expanded valence shell. They make life super exciting. Let's try one more of the expanded valence shell, and we'll do more in a future class. Uh, let's do xenon F4. I think this one will break the octet. Yeah, this should break the octet. Okay. Uh, valence electrons. Let's try this. Xenon, yeah, and xenon, even though it's supposedly a noble gas, does react to form these kind of species that's in column 8. And there's four uh, fluorines in column 7. So that's 28 plus 8, 36. So xenon, and put four fluorines around it. Like that. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8 of 36 units so far. Now go to the terminal atoms first. So 8 of 36, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32 of 36 so far. Everything has an octet and I have four more electrons to go. I'm going to put them on the center atom of the xenon. It's kind of strange. It breaks the octet, but notice something awesome is going to happen. What's the formal charge for any of the fluorines? Let's just look at this one. It should get zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's in column seven. What's the formal charge on xenon? It's also zero. It's in column eight, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things around it. So this is actually a really good structure. Uh, it has a formal charge of zero. In fact, I don't think we did it for the previous one. This structure is done. That one's great. We can do it for this one. It's charged as a minus one. The set of uh, the outermost iodines are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Both of these iodines have a formal charge of zero. How about the iodine in the center? Looks like it's one over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should be a seven. So that's a minus one. That's the sum of the formal charges equals the overall charge. So these are both really good Lewis structures as far as formal charge. And that's gonna, we're okay with them breaking the octet because they're below the carbon row. So they're both good. And that's an expanded valence shell. Okay, and that was section 9.6. We're gonna, you'll see plenty of examples on that. Uh, if you wanna see more, uh, tons of examples of Lewis structures. Lewis structures one to eight on YouTube. Definitely recommend you try them. You can start the video. After I write down the problem, pause it. See if you can solve it and then watch and see if you get the same answer as I do. Uh, Lewis structures are key to the rest of the chapters. Chapters 9 and 10, you got to do Lewis structures. They'll be a huge part of the final. Okay, I want to call your attention to something on page 87, just as far as definitions, sort of. 
I believe I have posted this table online. It's on page 87 of the reader. Just call your attention to it. Know that charge, oxidation state, and formal charge mean different things. Charge is the overall charge of the molecule, of the entire molecule. So nitrate ion is minus 1 because it's NO3 minus. So that minus or minus 1 is a charge. The oxidation state is what we did in chapter 3. You can still know that for the final. Make sure you can still find oxidation states. I did it for nitrate up there. And then formal charge is what we're doing in this chapter. You have to know that to do Lewis structures, and I did it for this molecule here as well. So formal charge is based on a co assumption of covalent bonds. Oxidation state is based on the assumption of ionic bonds. In fact, charge is based on the assumption of ionic bonds too. Okay? So that's just a summary so you know the difference between those three terms that we're using. Of course, in this chapter, charge and formal charge are the key ones.